Hello, everybody. I always love to hear where you're from and how long you've been in the industry. Oh, I love your, I want a cat. You can have any of mine. No, I foster, so I always have a bazillion of them. I'm like total cat lady. I, I'm actually like begging for a cat right now. Oh, they're the best. So I'll open up chat. So I don't do this type of technology very often. So it will be um, interesting for me. So everyone bear with me. If I don't respond to you right away, I will get back to you if we have any questions. And Maria, hopefully you can support me with that part of it too. Of course. If I have my recorder, if that's possible to let that join as well. Am I like note person? Sure. Everybody will. I'm going to give everybody like two more minutes. Okay. Cool. But I do see a couple of people on here if you guys want to say where you're from. So our motto for 2024 is don't suffer in silence. Mm -hmm. So you guys have Heather here. I would encourage you guys to ask questions and get involved. It's funny because I always hear people saying, you know, the industry is low um and you know in this economy and i'm like this is what the group is here for to support you guys mm -hmm. yeah it's very true uh, it's one of the things that inspires me to do this because when i see newer estheticians saying how long does it take and then yeah. seasoned estheticians say three to four years and i'm like there's a ounce of truth to that it's if we believe it Right. There's an element to that as if we believe it, that's true. Um, it doesn't have to be the case. It can be depending on how much effort you want to put into it. 100%. And if you're putting the right effort into it. I love that. So it's like mindset and like where your energy goes, something flows or something. Yeah. And sometimes we get hung up on what we think other people are doing to grow their business. And it's not actually what they're doing, but they don't talk about the other stuff they're doing because it's their secret weapon, you know? So there's, uh, there's, so many pieces to growing a business, but they aren't actually difficult. So if I share slides, will we still be also on camera or will it just be slides? Um, slides at the moment. Okay. Host. And for everybody on here, there will be a replay. It will be on our YouTube channel. Cool. Yeah, me. I don't know if it's asking me to join again. So let's see what happens. Maria, are you still here? Uh, I am. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. All right, cool. Let me know when you'd like me to start. Um, okay, let's get started. Okay, hello everybody. I'm Maria. I'm the admin of the Money Making Esthetician. And today we're joined by Heather. Hi. So go ahead, let's get started. So hey everybody, my name is Heather Dempsey. I am currently in Southwest Florida. I'm originally from Pennsylvania and I am really loving the energy of the group, the questions, the resources, all the people and the wisdom that we can all share. And I'm hoping that I can impart some of mine for you guys. So a little bit of my history so that you can tell if it feels like we're in the right place for you to be here for this training. Um, I started out in the spa industry at a really young age, and I've been in the industry since I was, let's see, 17, and I'm 48, so more than half my life. 
And throughout that journey, I did open my own business. It started out as a small, cute little day spa, and it ended up ranking as number one in the greater Philadelphia region for almost a decade until I sold it. So when I started my business, I started with $500 and it was with um, leftover paint cans that other people were donating, a client's sofa table that I use as my manicuring desk and just continued to grow from there. So in addition to the day spa, I've had a boutique, a yoga studio, metaphysical shop, a whole bunch of variations of the businesses. Um, in fact, at one point I had my larger day spa and then I had another spa right next door that was a couple's retreat spa. So I have a lot of experience with playing with building businesses. And I just, I honestly, I do feel like my perspective and my experience is it's easy. It's when we make it too emotional that it becomes hard and we don't utilize emotions. It makes our job more challenging. Um, I will absolutely love if you, um, add comments and ask questions, even if it doesn't seem relevant, please do. And I think in the chat, you would wanna pick um, everyone and, or everyone in the meeting, but please add that because I don't do a lot of this techie stuff. So me, I'm literally looking at myself on Zoom and I want to know who I'm engaging with and know how I can support you best. So um, a little more into the history, I had my award-winning day spa. I had at one point, I think the largest was 27 employees and they were actually employees. So I was paying their taxes and doing all the things. And um, I had a really tragic loss. My brother ended his life and I actually found myself to be angry with him because now I was stuck here and I noticed and then at the time my husband at the time noticed that i was severely depressed it was normal that i cried every single night at dinner um i was in my 20s and like early 30s at this point with 27 employees a gigantic business one that cost sixty thousand a month just to keep open including payroll and i was in over my head and i didn't know how to ask for help so that's why this month also or this year maria's motto means so much to me because this is the thing. It wasn't about like suffering in silence. It's the beliefs of why we suffer in silence. So we often, for me, it was who would want to help me and why. And if they saw how much I didn't know, they wouldn't trust that I knew anything and I wouldn't be able to keep a team and my clients wouldn't have faith in me. I was so, now I know this, then I had no idea. You know, I thought I ruled the world back then and it was just circumstances that weren't allowing it to happen. But now I understand that the beliefs that I carried about myself from childhood had a huge impact. So going into the story a little bit more, um, I ended up um, deciding I wanted to go away for a little bit and just unplug from my business, unplug from the life I'd known and see what happened if I kind of got back to who Heather was as an existing being. I went to Costa Rica for a couple months and um, I had no phone or internet. It was the first time I left my business and I left it for a couple months. So I think it was three months that I was gone in Costa Rica. And when I decided that I was ready, I was coming home, I made a pit stop in California because I'm from the East Coast. So I stopped in California. And then when I got to the airport in Pennsylvania, my husband was picking me up and he was like, I have something to tell you. So it turns out I didn't miss you for a second. I've been miserable for years and I've been lying to myself. I didn't even realize it until you were gone. So then my world completely collapsed because I had just lost my brother Then I was losing my husband. I realized I was miserable in my business and I started needing help. And so I'm sharing my story and it's not to just be able to talk about myself, but I want you to be able to pick up on, are there any nuances to what I'm saying about my experience that relate to your experience? Um, and I say that so you know that there is another place that you'll end up and that maybe I can help you get there. So uh, I was on the couch, I could hardly move. I didn't wanna leave. I ghosted my business. I had my team running it still when they expected me to be home. I was like, nope, I'm not even coming back. That's when I started to really need help. And I looked for previous mentors and consultants that worked with me on the business and asked them, I'm like, I know you have people that have meltdowns. Like, wh what, do you, what do you do for them? Like, where do they turn? So I started getting that kind of support. And then through that whole experience, I was like, oh gosh, I want to be that kind of support because our lack of success or our success in our business has so much more to do with us 
our patterns, our behaviors, our conditioning from our experiences than it does the app we're using, you know, what booking system, how many times we post. It's the energy that's coming through in our post. It's the energy coming through in our content. It's the energy that we experience when we're with a client. So this is not just an all mindset meeting, not at all, but it started, my evolution started from noticing the internal patterns that were happening from my belief about myself. And so in seeing, I wanted to be that kind of support for people. I sold my business. I was done. I didn't want to be in the industry anymore. I thought I just like was completely finished. And I was supporting people with with grief, trauma, anxiety. And um, I was a, an online emotional health, emotional wellness coach. And I love the spa industry, right? I still had uh, an interest in it, but I was like done. So um, when COVID happened and I couldn't go out to eat anymore and kind of eavesdrop and jump in on people's conversations, I noticed how much I missed talking about business. And so then this thing was like, oh, maybe I want to be a business coach. So I started working with highly sensitive empaths, introverts who had service-based businesses, again, still all online. Then um, I got banned from Facebook and Instagram. So I was hacked. Whatever the hackers did was so inappropriate. I got lifetime banned for from social media, which is why I'm not super savvy with this stuff. But um, in that process, I no longer had a business because everything that I had was online coaching. And so in uh, my appeal process and thinking it was going to all work out, when I realized it wasn't, I was like, what the heck am I going to do? And in this like spitefully bratty way, I was like, you know what, fine, I'll just open another uh, brick and mortar, I'll open a spa again. And so that's where my journey into this begins, because I opened my business and I started joining. I had been out of the industry now for almost eight years at this point. A lot has changed, let me tell you. For those of you who've been in it for the past even four years, so much has changed. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I kind of need to like learn about the treatment room all over again. And so I came into this group as one of my top resources. And you'll see, I ask very basic skincare questions because I'm kind of new in the industry again, but in opening my business, I moved to Florida. I know no one but my mom, who's as antisocial as I am. I opened my business and I went from zero to 13K a month in three months. And I like hardly tried. And I was like, okay, now I'm in these groups and asking my questions about products and, and procedures, but I'm seeing the majority of estheticians asking about how to get started and they're thinking of closing their business, what can they do? And I was like, no, 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 like it's not that hard. It doesn't have to be that hard. So I wanna share with you um, some of the tips and secrets that I didn't realize were secrets until being back in the industry. So any any questions as of right now about anything, in case anybody wants to be any uh, like fact finder, my business was called the Face and Body Spa. It was in Yardley, Pennsylvania. I sold it back in 2017. 19 me I don't remember but anyway you can find out and if you google my name you can see I was connected to it so um I'm gonna pull up some slides just to keep me organized so let's see if I can get this right again please post if you have any questions if I don't see it hopefully Maria can let me know if there are any so what I would love to share with you today is the psychology of sales and retention so it's not as simple as mindset convincing yourself we're actually talking about the psychology of how to work with people how to pull out the right information how to trigger the right stuff for them so that you can get booked for a lifetime and everybody that walks in you have a higher likelihood of retaining them so what kind of stuff how does that look Look, let's see how I'm working this. Okay, I already went through a lot of who I am, but let me see if I missed anything. So yeah, 18 different businesses. This counts as locations when I would increase the size of a location and move um, 27 employees at the highest point, um, switching gears. So now I'm solo and really thriving. I'm happier than I've ever been. This is um, just kind of a place saver because I want to start with the energy of it. And I really wanna ask you guys some questions that get you in a certain place energetically. So if you are able to, I'm gonna invite you to close your eyes so you can really start to feel into the questions I'm asking and visualize if that's available to you. So what is your dream for your business? 
Like, what does it look like? What does it feel like? What are the aesthetics? What do you feel in your business? What is your dream for it? And if your eyes are closed, connect with that business when you've already reached the success that you dream of. So imagine if we're daydreaming and we've, we've arrived where we want to be. When you've reached your top level of success, what are you doing in your business? Like, what does a day look like for you? Are you still seeing clients? Do you have a team that sees clients? How many clients are coming in through your door every day? What is that experience like for you? How are you dressed? How does it, how is the lighting within your space? When you walk down a hallway or into a room, what does it feel like when you pass the threshold of the door? So let yourself really get into that immersion experience. And if you're a little bit distracted or doing other things, please come back to this and, and really um, allow yourself to experience this. It's incredibly powerful. So when you are seeing all of these clients and your top level of success in your business, you're, you've made it, what are their favorite services that they come in to receive? What kind of money are they spending? When you're ringing someone out or overseeing your you know, um, coordinator, checking someone out, how much is their ticket, their tab? What kind of retail do they invest in? And here's one that's really fun. In this version of your business, are you seeing anything that you haven't thought of until now? Is there something within your business that you're like, oh, oh wow, I never thought to have that, or this is what it looks like and that wasn't part of your dream. Just allow that to, to appear. Maybe you'll surprise yourself that this inner knowing kind of knows where your success is and how to get there. So what I really want for you is to allow yourself to feel how it feels being in this energy with your business. What is it like? Like for me, I feel a little bit of tingles. So I'm really empathic and very highly sensitive. So I know that some of you are really getting into this exercise and I can feel what you're feeling. I'm sweating a little bit because I get so excited. And actually right now, as I'm talking about it, I'm getting choked up a bit. Like, can you imagine when you like really make it, <laughs> how that will feel? So let yourself go there because it's the one of the most powerful places you can be for your business success. Hold on to this vision. See if you can somehow capture this feeling. Maybe you've felt this way before in another experience in your life, but capture it so you can recreate it. You can practice this and you'd be able to recreate it at will. And why I'm asking you to do this is because this is my first tip, my first lesson for you guys. Anytime you are creating content, anytime you are reaching out to prospects, anytime that you are networking, you absolutely must do it from this energy. If you start creating content because your month is slow and because you're not making the bills, I promise you that energy is within that content and people don't know it, they don't understand it, but they feel it. And there's a lack of trust, a lack of energetic congruency is what I call it, which stops rapport, which stops rebooking. So I hope this is all making sense. I would really love to hear um, of someone's experience. If you are willing, I'm going to give it just a minute for everybody to sit with it. Please, if you're willing to share, post in the chat or even on mute if it's not too crazy to do so and share what may have come up for you. Especially, I love to hear if there was something surprising that you don't have planned for your business, but you saw it. So I'm going to wait. I really want somebody to chime in. And I will say, you get out of everything what you put into it. So please participate here. I know specifically for me, when I heard you saying about like the ticket, I think I probably do about two fifty a ticket. Mm -hmm. But I pers I mean, obviously, like retail, I retail Circadia, but mm -hmm. I would like to do six hundred a ticket, and I want to bring in Jet Plasma, mm -hmm. and I'm like thinking about the bundles and like things. I'm like, Ugh, I didn't even know that I actually really wanted to. I want Jet Plasma really bad, but I was like, can I do it? As yeah. long as I've been in business, I still get. Like, can I? And I've proven to myself that I can, but I'm still right. like, I don't know. Yeah. So I'd love yeah. to hear how much you guys, like your dream client, how much do you want to make? I personally would like to do $600 a person. Mm -hmm. Is that possible? 100%. Yeah, totally. 
Because you can also factor in, let's say $600 a person, but it doesn't mean it's services that you're providing and it doesn't mean that you're doing it right now. So let's just play around for example. What could you do that might be worth $600 for a person? What if it is actually that you record yourself doing their skincare procedure or um, home care routine so that when you send them home with their 10 products that you know they'll forget how to use, they have a curated, custom, personalized demo of you doing it. You do it in your pajamas at home when you're bored, right? You don't have to do it with them, but now they have it forever. And who knows who they might share it with. They certainly will talk about it. So that's something that's, that's a huge value. We forget how smart we are and how much wisdom we have that our clients don't. That's why they're coming to us. So that technically the ticket for that that's, if that took you 15 minutes to do, but you've curated the, the line, you're showing them how, that's $150 value in my opinion. It's a consultation. So right. now you can add that to a service and your $600 ticket might be what they spend in the bundle. And so what does that bundle include? Is it home care? Is it, you know, for me, also it's me saying like referrals. What kind of people will they bring in for me as well? I count that as ticket as well um so give ideas of like how it can be it doesn't have to be what we're providing and the services that we're selling but the value we give as well yeah anybody else at least so i i want to see in the chat at least say like something that's anything Awesome. Cool. I love it. Is it Kelly? That's great. It's so fun, right? We just have to think outside of the box. What if there weren't any limits? That's a question I ask myself all the time. What if I wasn't insecure? That's a super fun question to ask yourself. What would I be doing to make $600 a client if I wasn't insecure? If I didn't doubt myself, if I didn't worry about what people would think of me, if I thought I was good enough, if I thought I was an all-star esthetician, what would I be doing? differently than I'm doing now. A lot of times we already have the answers. We're just chickens. <laughs> we don't do it, right? So, okay. Thank you for playing along with that. I don't want to waste too much time, but this is important because it's a really powerful piece of being in abundance mindset. So for me, I, for a long time, like that's one of my biggest issues is scarcity mindset. It was the detriment to my businesses actually. And when I moved to Florida, I thought, you know what, this feel, it just feels abundant to me living here. I have palm trees and a lake outside of my condo. It's not even like I live fancy, but Florida living feels fancy. So I would go and just float in a pool. And I would allow myself to have gratitude that there was a pool I had access to and that I could float. And I told myself while I was floating, I don't have to do a single thing. And here I am completely supported. And in fact, the less I try, the less effort I put in, the easier it is for me to float. I don't actually have to do anything. And then I added gratitude to it, or it was like, let me look at the sky. Like, wow, I get to see this color, clouds. I get to see anything. And these practices definitely have contributed a ton to why I believe success became effortless for me. And um, I want to also, again, here, I'm asking for feedback. I know everybody's always shy on these things, but you're not going to, I can personally coach you right now if you chime in. But I want to ask, do you feel well-known and respected in your craft? And if you don't, are you doing anything to feel well-known and respected in your craft? So what kind of things are we um, putting out to the world? So I often, I would say if, you don't feel well known and respected. It might be because you're newer and that's fine. But pick up on one thing that you do know well. Have one skin type, one personality type, one condition, one type of product and know it like the back of your hand. There's so many times that we can segue into what we want to talk about with our clients or we can kind of uh, uh, bring things into like comparison. And so when you know something like the back of your hand, you feel confident, you come out with confidence and you can start to talk about that and then clients will feel more comfortable with you and you just keep expanding what that thing is. Instead of trying to know all the things all at once, you can't, people can see right through it. It's like, sorry to say, but they can because there's energetic incongruency of seeming like you know it all and knowing you don't know it all. 
So know something well and own it. Let that be your specialty. You will become well known for it. It feels super scary. We're kind of talking about niching here. It feels super scary because you're like, I don't have enough business to begin with. Now I'm going to say I help these people, but I promise you something that I share in my academy with my students is the more you know about a certain thing, the more trust people have in you, period. So if I excel and I am the all-star at lash lifts, and then all of a sudden I start adding something else, if my clients know they can count on me to give the best, they know that the next thing I'm going to do is probably going to be spectacular as well. So help yourself to be well-known and respected by considering what that niche would look like. This I know is the scariest thing. I am a coach, an online coach. So this is what we have to deal with all the time. It's newer in this industry. And the way that I love to introduce it is imagine if you could only do one type of service for the next five years. Now, of course, this isn't true. So play along. If you could only pick one type of person, one type of condition, one product, just one of something, what's the one thing you could see yourself doing for the next five years? That's probably your niche or at least where you should be focusing your messaging and marketing and content. Because it's obviously something you're either passionate about, well-versed in, or curious about. And there's something about it, it, or maybe you have a ton of clients and you see great results from it. So niching is a really powerful way to get well-known, get respected, which helps to build rapport, trust, and your business. So client attraction. I also have notes that I wanna peek at because I don't wanna forget, okay. I did not write notes for this one. So I can't see my notes that I cheated with. So hang on just a moment for client attraction. Client attraction. We are usually spinning our wheels trying to attract new business, right? And it's like, how do you get new clients? How do you get new clients? And people are, I really see, and I I am surprised by this. I see so often that people are posting about how they're posting on their business page and they think that's gonna get them business. So it's probably not. And it's most likely people that already know you are already supporting you or already considering supporting you that are watching it. Or it's people that wanna see what you're up to now or it's your haters that just wanna see what they can copy, right? The spa down the street that wants to see what your newest thing is. So with client attraction, I'd rather utilize other people's client list, right? I'd rather utilize other people's efforts to market me. But why would somebody want to market me? Why would somebody want to share their list with me? Well, it needs to be worth it for them. So what's in it for them? Have you considered who has your ideal client? All their contacts, right? You're, they're working with your ideal client. Is it, maybe you're an esthetician, you know, a massage therapist. Maybe you are an esthetician, you know, an energy worker. Maybe it's a gynecologist. Maybe it's a chiropractor. Whatever it is, someone is also working with your ideal clients. How can you make it worth it for them to share you with them? Are you paying them for a referral fee? Are you treating them to something or are you making them look like a hero for introducing you or their guests to you? So I do that with realtors. This is a big, I'm giving away something really big here. Um, I give every realtor, right? When they sell a home or when they have somebody buy it, they give a gift. It's usually a gift card to go out to dinner. So that's awesome. They went and spent probably 50, 100, $200 on a gift card for dinner. And I'm like, hey, you don't have to spend any money. Give them a gift card with me. It's free. So my gift cards, that's a $20 gift certificate towards any service. Now they've added value to the gift they're giving their customer, client, whatever they refer to them as. And now I have potential new business. And even if they don't ever come to me, I still am getting my name out there. So it costs me the printing. That's it. The realtor thinks I'm amazing because now they look better to work with. It's a longer lasting impression. And the way that I make it worth it for the realtor, because obviously they know I'm trying to get something out of it. I usually say to realtors, hey, I printed out a couple of my Google listings, my Google reviews, and I want to see, show you what people are saying about a service with me. How do you think your clients would feel if you gave them this type of experience? So now they know how it's benefiting them and they're more likely to want to participate. Again, it's free for them. It's a total win-win for me. So has anybody done anything like this before? Are you utilizing other people's audiences? And if you aren't, most likely it's just because you haven't found the bribe that's hardy enough, to be honest. Um, So start thinking and ask them, even just come right out and ask, what would it take for you to share me with your list? You know, I see that we have really great clients that could, you know, be aligned. What would it take for you to do that? And um, 
most of the time people will tell you. So um, let's see what my next my next contribution. Any questions so far? All right, so I went ahead, so we'll go back into client attraction. So I'm gonna just peek and see. Um, <laughs> that's awesome, very cool. I'm glad this is resonating for some of you. It's, uh, this is just, this is a sample, right? I only have an hour and I've used up a half of it and I'm not even like a quarter of the way through. So um, my brain is just like, loves to share this. Um, all right, so with client attraction, again, we were talking about utilizing the Facebook um, business profile. Wait, I wanna clear something up in case people are like, wait a second, how'd you get banned from Facebook and how are you in this group? I use my mom's account. So just so you know, I'm not lying. I actually did get banned. So when you see Kathy Brady, but it's Heather Dempsey, that's me. <laughs> Kathy Brady is my mom. So anyway, um, so client attraction. When we are using our own business page, it's not getting much view. It's not getting a lot of algorithms. Um, another gigantic tip here is using Facebook groups. Not actually going to share a lot of the details of how, but I will tell you if you're just posting your monthly special, that is not the way. So um, there are other ways. And again, consider everything about what I'm teaching you today is making it about the other person. We are so used to proving our business to people, proving ourselves to them, trying to, in a sense, convince them, especially if we're younger in business and we're hungry for money. We're trying to convince people and lure them in. We don't have to do that. We just have to make everything about them and they'll wanna be around us. So with social media, stop promoting, stop posting and promoting your specials. Start asking questions. So I'm gonna give just a little bit of information. Um, a lot of times people are like, oh, like September, we're doing this, like autumn, blah, blah, blah. So somebody that wants that already probably wants it. You're not drawing in new people. And then people are just getting used to looking at when are your specials. But instead, you could post stuff like, hey, now that we're moving into autumn, what are some of your favorite autumn skincare products? What are some of the favorite um, aromas that you would want to smell in the room during a facial or spa treatment when you're getting a treatment? So in this, it's so safe for the person to respond because you're not selling anything. People get all upset because like I'm posting my specials all the time, but nobody's engaging. Why would they? They're probably like, as soon as I engage, I'm going to get on their mailing list. I'm going to get a bazillion text messages and emails. Everyone's afraid to put themselves out there. Certainly, they're not afraid to like um, troll us and like say mean things, but they're afraid to say like, I'm kind of interested. So ask questions instead. So ask questions about what is your face, your favorite thing that somebody has had in their skincare room? What's your favorite equipment? What's a must have? When I moved to Florida and I was thinking about offering skincare again, again, I was out of the industry for like eight, at least eight years that I was out of the industry and I hadn't been providing skincare for years before that. I was just running the business. So I was asking people, hey, new to Florida, thinking about opening a skincare business, what are some must haves for you? So glad I asked because Florida, a hundred and some degrees, Everybody wanted a table warmer. I would have never in a million years thought that. But the benefits, right? All this stuff is so amazing because uh, now I know I need a table warmer if I decide to open a business. And now everybody who told me because it was about them, what do they want? I wasn't selling anything. They felt comfortable to answer. They kind of know that I do skincare. So then I could reach out and say, thank you so much. This was brilliant. I would have never thought of it. Do you want me to let you know if I open? So now I have prospects waiting for me to open. I ask questions about what are your favorite product lines? What are your biggest complaints about skincare in Florida? I'm used to Pennsylvania. To be honest, we didn't even use sunscreen. Now I see here we need to. So I asked questions. I made it very engaging so people would respond. So this is a problem that I do see very often with client attraction is people aren't attracting clients. They're trying to grab them and collect them like it's a shopping spree. So think of it this way. If you're in a pool, I love using these water references. If you're in a pool and there's a leaf floating on the surface, if you go to grab it, it either splashes away or the wave pushes it further. But if you are, uh, yes, I ask them in community groups local to the area. So it would be like, again, I'm in a seasonal area so that I have tons of Facebook groups, like things that are happening in Venice, Florida, um, like friendly people of Venice, Florida. That's where you would be posting that kind of stuff. Uh, anywhere that you're allowed and you're not soliciting your business. So you're usually allowed to be more conversational. And again, as these posts are getting responded to because there's no pressure, your post 
Facebook is being like, oh, who's this person? Everyone's answering her. Let's keep showing him, her, them more. So you're going to get seen more often. So like I was saying, if you're in a pool and there's a leaf, if you go to grab at it, it floats away. But if you just like kind of let it come towards you, you'll eventually be able to get it. So we need to use ways that are attracting people instead of us trying to grab them. All right. So we covered the client attraction. We covered ambassadors. Layers of branding, another super important thing. Um, People are putting all their eggs in one basket. I feel so crazy blessed that I got out of the industry before we even used Facebook for attracting clients. So when I was getting out of the industry um, for the period that I was, Facebook pages were the thing. Our business page, that was all that we had. There weren't groups. There wasn't anything like that. So what did we do? We posted affirmations, right? We, I couldn't even at that point get any of my technicians to do videos or even have a picture of them. I wanted at that time to say like top staff picks, you know, this is what Lori did with this client. Here's the before and after. We couldn't get any of that stuff. It was so fresh that people could still say no to that stuff and they just didn't. Social media was still new. So for now, what I see is like everybody's putting it all in social media. And I'm so grateful that I didn't even know how to because I am relying on the organic stuff, grassroots, walking door to door, all these different things. And I'm also old, so I don't want to work so hard. (laughs) So I am finding easier ways to do all of the different things. So layers of branding is so important. And what does that look like? It is having a nice, strong, consistent presence. You don't actually have to post on Facebook every day. You just have to post content that people actually want. Blogging, right? So SEO is better for people to search to find you. It would be uh, magazines, publications, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, things like that, doing all the different layers so that if one flops, you still have something to lean on. This is a hard lesson that I learned. You know, I was completely 100% reliant on Facebook and Instagram for my business. I had no business because I got hacked. I didn't do anything wrong, but I still can't get it back. So luckily now I'm prepared and it's like, okay, so I, when I opened my business and I was using my mom's stuff, I started my business, the skincare aspect of the business. I started it with Facebook ads. I didn't have a following. I didn't know anybody. I took a little bit of money, put it towards ads. They can be successful when they're done right. The problem when people saying they don't do anything, they're just not doing them right. We people, Facebook ads wouldn't exist if they didn't work. They exist because they work. You just have to learn how to work it. So I use that to kickstart my business. When you're offering promotions, you need to offer a promotion that's too good to resist, but not too good that they wouldn't pay full price given after the experience they've had with you. So there has to be that perfect balance and you can play around and see what that looks like. Um, Okay, so this is like not even the good stuff. So let me actually skip forward to studying the data. You wanna really look at study the data. Okay, I'm gonna skip these questions because I wanna spend time with you on these. um, So if you're watching the recording, actually I'll go back and go through slower so you can pause on each in case you have questions. Let me close the chat real quick. So we talked about ambassadors, finding people to promote you, layers of branding, why it's so important, more eggs, put them in all different baskets, study the data, nothing is personal. No one is not caring about you, everyone is caring about themselves. So study the data, don't take it personal. Um, So how do you feel about your client retention rate? How do you feel about how many people your clients refer? How do you feel about your retail sales? How much do you wanna earn each month? Where are you now? I really wanna help you. That's what I'm saying. Like, this is an example. This is what someone is. This is where they wanna be. I can help, I can't do it in an hour. Obviously, I'm already running out of time. So let's just dive into this stuff. What I wanna talk about that I find to be the most important and valuable is our intake form and our consultation. There is, this is where I talk about the psychology of sales and retention. Your intake form, I don't see people utilizing them, especially in chains, they give them a form and it's literally an intake form is usually the, I don't wanna get sued form. It's not what it is. It's a, I wanna protect myself, I wanna protect my client, and I wanna make this a home run that this client comes back to me forever. So I just wrote just a couple of the questions that I have on my intake form. And it's one that I share with my students in my academy. But one of the questions is, what does your routine look like at home? So just 
just play with me for a second. Somebody just please write in the chat. Is this on your intake form? Or have you ever seen this on an intake form? Say yes, if you have. So most of the time people are like, oh, okay, because I want to know what product line they use. So that way I know what products I have that are comparable. I want to know what they're targeting. There's a lot of reasons that people are asking this and they're all very smart reasons. But the smarter reason is because I want to see how many things they're using at home. If someone comes in and says, oh, I use a cleanser. And if another person has, I use a cleanser, a toner, an eye serum, uh, eye treatment, a you know moisturizer, a mask, body care products, sunscreen, we know so much about that client already. We know about their behavior. We know about their habits. We know about potentially their opinion about skincare. It's either the just cleanser person has no idea, does not see the value in it, doesn't see the importance, never had success with the line before, or doesn't have the money, thinks they need more time. We speak to that person very differently than the person who uses it all. The person who uses it all, we just have to tell them why our product might be a good replacement, where our treatments are a good um, complement to their home care. We also want to give them accolades and, and compliment them for the fact that they are so dedicated. We want to educate the client that's only using a cleanser and a toner, maybe a moisturizer. This is great. I'm glad you're off to like a good start. But did you know that like 80% of the results and the impact you have on your skin is from your home care? So we can do this all day long and it's great and it's, it's such a nice treat, but I really want to see your skin improve the way you want it to. So we're educating them in the intake form from that one question. You can basically go off that one question and start your treatment and have a client locked in with you for life. But obviously you need to know allergies and that stuff too. So another one that I love to ask is, um, when was your last facial? And again, tells you a bazillion things. Uh, it was three years ago. Oh, so is this something that you just do for a treat? Okay, that person that's just there for a treat, I'm not going gangbusters to try to get them to buy a whole huge program. They will never come back. They're gonna resent it. They're not gonna trust me. They're gonna feel like it was pushy. For that person, oh, okay, cool. So you just do this as a treat. I totally admire that. I love it. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you picked me to treat you today. Is it okay if at the end that I do share some things? Because again, I, I this is my obsession. I want to tell you what I know and I want to share what could benefit you. Not that you have to do anything. This is totally fine. So it's that invitation of you're letting them know you might. The reason I let them know before the treatment is so that they're prepared and quite possibly throughout the treatment. Now they're thinking, oh, I wonder if she's going to tell me about this product she's using because it smells really good. Oh, that texture. I don't know if I like that texture. I wonder what that is. They're thinking about everything we're doing now, all because we asked if it's something they only do occasionally, can we still share something? So the other reason I love this, when I have clients that say like, I just got it last month, <laughs> they're mine. They clearly didn't like the esthetician they went to last. They get facials on a fairly regular basis probably. I just have to find out why they haven't been happy that they don't have a regular esthetician to go to. That is like my favorite answer in the whole world. So I usually say, okay, last month, so what's bringing you back in a month? And usually they'll say if they regularly get facials or, um, you know, if maybe they're they're here just on vacation, that's why they're not. So that also, it's really good information for me to have. Let me just check the chat. I think I saw somebody else. Awesome. Cool. Um, so when I know what they have had, if they had it last month or a couple weeks ago, what did you love about it? Um, you know, what brings you back? Is there anything they didn't address that you wanted to address? Is there anything that I could do better than what they did? Is there anything that disappointed you? I want the nitty gritty of all of it. And then to follow that one up is, so I need to know, please, what would make this your absolute favorite facial that would ensure that you would want to come back to me next time? Like, I never had anybody ask me that before they gave me a facial treatment or a massage or a manicure, nothing. I have never had a spa professional and I've worked with like 600 so far, more. No one's ever asked what would make this your favorite treatment ever. How easy would it be to make our clients happy if we asked them what would make it their favorite? Because what if they're like, oh God, today my neck is hurting. If I just had a little extra TLC on the neck, there you go. It's that little extra stuff of it's about them. It's not about us. We're not trying to do anything except completely thrill them in their service. So what else? Um, any questions so far? Let me see if there's anything in here. 
Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Maria. Um, consultation, also a big way that when people are doing a consultation and their client is already changed and laying on the table, you're leaving a ton of money on the table, literally on the table, or they're taking it with them. You want to start the consultation clothed one-to-one sitting eye to eye. If you can do it in front of retail, it's even better because you can go grab stuff as you're talking about it. So um, once they're already on the table, there's no rapport that's been built. If you like look at their intake form, take them to the room, have them get changed, and then start talking to them, this is a vulnerable place for a person to be having taken any clothes off, being in a strange place, talking to a stranger. Build that rapport before they're there and you will have them melt on the table. I'm not saying that you can't do that. If you're successful with it, great. I'm just saying maybe test it this way if you if you haven't done it like that. I do find that pulling out products is really helpful. And that's one of the things, the other suggestions I have during the intake and the consultation. As you're talking about the service, so I know I'm gonna be like running out of time soon. I still had so much to do. We're gonna do another one because I wanna piggyback on this. I want you guys to share what you wanted to know more about, and then I'll be able to share the rest of it next time. So it'll be a part two to be continued. But one of the things that we really want to make sure, we wanna make sure that our client is buying in the entire time. So when you're talking about, okay, so we're here today, this is what you want to address. For me, it's always about like aging skin, pigmentation, dehydration. So it would be, okay, so we are really wanting to to work on helping the skin stay more resilient, stay stronger so that we're not having any sagging, any issues like that. All right, so based on that, is that is that accurate? Am I getting that right? This is how I'd be dialoguing with the client. Is that is that clear? Did I hear you right? Am I understanding what you want? Um, that way they can correct me if I'm wrong, if I misunderstood in any way. And then I would say, all right, well, based on this and just looking at your skin as of right now, some of the products I think I'm going to use on you, one of my favorites, and I'll name drop products like bamboo um, firming fluid. Um, I'm really thinking that I would like to start working with some stem cell products for you. Um, maybe we can talk about that for home care. What do you think? Are you interested in that at all? This is so conversational, right? It does not feel like I'm selling anything at all. And then I would be saying, all right, and so as far as treatment, so there's a lot that I can do just in the massage part of it. And I wanna teach you how you can be applying your product to benefit from this massage as well. So how do you feel about if your lip was like a little bit fuller and you had that, like the lines were a little smoother. Can we work on that? All right, so that's cool too. So I'm also gonna use the um, recovery oil around the lips as a hydration, but also to help with the slip for massage. Um, I'll tell you about that after as well. And so now through the whole treatment, even though they haven't memorized the names, there's something familiar about what I'm using. And they're thinking like, oh, wow, I think I want that product, right? So I tell them all these things, they already have it in their head. And at the end, I will ask again, does this sound like I'm on the right page? When they say yes, okay, let's just make sure we totally are. What about what I have said sounds good to you? This is the genius. This is part of neuro-linguistic programming. This is where I love now being able to pair my coaching with my skincare because I almost feel like I'm like tricking people, but they are now going to respond to you of why what you said is true to them. So from that point on, it's their truth, not me convincing them or trying to sell anything. What about this sounds true for you? What about this sounds accurate? What about this sounds like this is what you need? Asking people questions like, um, why is this like, okay, so we need to address this, you know, firming or pigmentation or acne or whatever. What makes it important now that you really want to address it? So they answer what's important about it now. Now you have emotion points that you can start to draw from. And then after they tell you why it's important now, just be like, all right, so how long have you been addressing this? They tell you how long, probably a long time. And just give me an idea of like the length of time that it's been an issue. What do you think will happen if we don't do anything? Now they're telling themselves why they need to take action, why they need to do something. So you are getting them to tell themselves why they need to see you on a regular basis, why they need the products that you've suggested, and why you're the one for them.
So how does this sound so far for everybody who's here? Is it, um, give me like a billion hearts if you love it. Um, no, but is it anything that you have heard before? I do want to know this in total honesty. Have you heard this philosophy before? Because I've been working with private coaching clients on this stuff. I am now bringing it in a group setting. So I want to know more about the masses of, is this a strategy that's being utilized or do we have a serious like secret ticket here? Um, all right. So let me just look and see if there's anything else that feels super important. Okay. Another crazy, awesome, important thing. Let's see. So seeding is where I talk about planting the seeds for the products you're going to be using, right? So using the recovery oil, using the bamboo firming, um, it works better when they sell themselves. So we want them saying, yes, we want them telling us why what we've suggested is a brilliant idea and it's perfect for them. And then you also want to speak as though you already know you have a future together. I never did this as like an on purpose thing. It's just what I did when I was younger. And specifically, I, I noticed I did it when I was doing nails. I was a nail tech first, skincare right after. But when I was doing nails, people would come in, they'd have crazy short nails, snaggled cuticles. I couldn't fix that. So the insecure part of me wanted them to know I wasn't a miracle worker. I was going to do the best I could. But if they wanted to keep coming back, this is what I could promise them. So I'd say like, all right, well, today I can clean up your cuticles, but obviously that inflammation and redness, like I can't do anything about that. But as I clean up the cuticles and get all those little hangnails, they won't be able to, you can't pull them or bite them or get them snagged. And then each time it's going to get smoother. It's going to be able to heal. We're going to nourish and condition. All that conditioning is going to actually help the health of your fingernails. They're going to grow. And I would give them the future vision of what was possible just like I did with you earlier, asking you to see your future success. How much more do you want it now that you saw it? Same thing with our clients. They hear this vision. They also unconsciously, the part of us that wants to be lovable, likable, and wanted and worthy, knows that we want them back. So they immediately feel welcome and wanted. And people wanna be around people that like them. You don't want to be around people that hate you or don't appreciate you. So your clients, new clients will feel that much more at home with you. Speak to them as though you have a future together. So again, pigmentation, if we're talking about facials, we can't fix that in one session. But I see estheticians that don't even utter because they feel like it's too much pressure or they're pushy. No, you have to say, this is what I think we can do today. But I can assure you, if we did this in this type of, here are options of what it could look like for us to continue to work together, because I want you to have those results too. So, 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 so important. Talk to them like you already have a future. Okay. Um, so let me look again at my little notes. Any questions so far? Does anybody have a question they want to put in the chat or even unmute to ask? Nothing yet. All right, so I'm curious where you are in your business, how far you feel from your vision. It says, how far are you from your vision, but it's how you feel, how far you are is how far you will be. So how far do you feel? Um, what have you been doing that's been working for you? So if you're doing anything that's working, let me tell you right now, just double and triple down on it. We get into this fear and scarcity. I'm so guilty of it that like, okay, this is working, but what if it stops working? Or what if this works better? And we end up diluting our efforts by doing too much. So what have you been doing that is working for you? Double down on it. Is it working fast enough? And if you did double down, it would work faster. But if, is it working fast enough? And is there anywhere that you want to turbo boost your growth? because of course this is educational moment but i also want to give you a chance to keep working with me so i can help you even more specifically with your business i haven't even seen any of your faces which is like i want to see you all but you could possibly work with me if it's interesting to you if you like this content so the thing that i like to ask especially because we have a chat open that you can ask questions i do want you to share with me where can you see yourself getting stuck Right, like if there is an area that you're really good at your business and an area you see yourself pulling back from, where is that? Where do you get stuck? And would you um, 
Would you like to hear what it's like, right? If you liked what I shared, here's how I can continue to support you. This is so super fast. Again, it'll be on YouTube. You can pause it and look. You can reach out to me. My contact information is going to be at the bottom. I want to leave a couple minutes just for comments, questions, and to go over this. So I do have an academy. It's a year long. This is the value, not the cost. This is the value of stuff that's shared in the academy. It is a self-paced curriculum, which means I've recorded modules, things like this. I actually have a recording of how to make the intake form. I do Google Forms. Another little uh, tip, being in the industry so long, you change your softwares, you try new things, and all those client notes are gone with the new software. So I use Google Forms and Google um, Docs very often. So it doesn't matter what software I go into, I still have all the data that I want. So anyway, things like that, modules where I'm teaching you about what does the intake form look like? You don't have to figure out the questions. I tell you what they are, what they mean, how to ask them, how to dig deeper. What does a consultation look like? How does it become perfect? And how do you get booked for a lifetime with repeat clients? There's two um, live calls every month where we are answering questions. You get to come with your personal stuff, like, hey, I've gone through this part in the academy, here's what I tried, here's what I ran into, or um, I wanna try this, what do you think? There's also a private community, so during the in-between time when we're not having the live calls, you can ask questions. Um, I will either answer them by responding or I'll record a video answering it and post it in the academy so that it becomes a learning opportunity for everybody. The, um, I mentioned you'll have the intake form, the consultation, effortless sales method. Oh man, that's what I really wanted to get into today. I have three ways that I teach people to sell. It's great for somebody that's super shy, super new, doesn't know the product line they're working with yet. I have one for people that are getting a little more confident. They want to test their skills. And then I have one that wants to be completely hands-off, but they want to sell a boatload of products. That one takes a, a smidge more time with clients, but it's actually really easy. And it's like, I don't know why it took me this long to think of it. So I love to share that. Maybe I'll do that for next time, but I definitely um, go into this and help with coaching through this stuff in the academy. So total value for this stuff is almost $12,000. You know the value of this stuff. I mean, if you get one client that keeps coming back to you, I think records right now say they're worth like $6,000 a uh, lifetime, right? And so I'm helping you get clients to book more and spend more. So it's no brainer. We got two clients and we've paid for this stuff. So stuff that's recorded in the curriculum, the elite spa brand, right? Niching, um, how do we really create the, um, the, the textile experience, right? The textures, the, the visual, all that stuff. Elite spa CEO, this is a lot with mindset. It's a lot about our boundaries. It's where are we um, having a cancellation policy that we're not enforcing, wanting to take credit cards and not, right? When we get a, let our clients get away with stuff, swearing we're gonna take a couple days off and then working straight through. This is super important, but also how to set yourself up with um, other businesses, right? Smart practices, resources, things like that. Elite client experience, this is my mutant ability. I am obsessed with figuring out how to make something amazing for people. Being an empath and highly sensitive, we're especially skilled at that. So if you are as well, you have a secret weapon and I wanna help you utilize it even more. Elite profit is all the different ways of marketing. So since I don't have social media, I do know how to teach Facebook. I will teach you about brick and mortar stuff like grassroots stuff. I'll teach you about the ambassadors. I'll teach you about paid ads. So there's a lot in there that's about how to market yourself. I also give you samples of like, I design different marketing material and upload it into the academy saying, you could do this or you can do this. These are different referral programs that are that are offered. So I don't believe that there's a cookie cutter way. And I do think that a lot of coaches, not necessarily in this industry, just coaches in general, instructional stuff in general, it's like people are telling you this has to be the way. No, you're this type of person with this type of budget, with this type of client, with this type, I want you to have, um, boxes and options to choose from to curate your successful business. So sharing all different ways so you can find what works best for you. Elite spa employee, that's for if you're an employee, even if you work for someone, you're still your own boss in a way. You still have your own business. I should say it that way. You have your own business. It's up to you whether you do a good enough job that people come back. It's up to you if you sell retail. So I want to teach you as a spa employee how to get your boss to support you.
So many times you're like, oh, they won't buy anything. Well, they will when they know it's worth it. And I'm going to help you figure out that, that approach. I was the employee or the employer saying no to everybody. And I know what they would have needed to do to get me to say yes. I also, since um, creating this template, I also have one for hiring. So I go through, um, I actually take you through my Indeed resumes of people as I'm interviewing. I tell you what I think, I'm doing it live, like, hey, this resume just came in, this is my first impression. Then I tell you what happens during the interview, and then I tell you what happens afterwards. There's one where I did end up hiring someone, and I, I was, uh, I think I saw a little red flag, I forget if I mentioned it in the training, but I end up coming back saying, yep, didn't work and here's why. So a lot of behind the scenes stuff, I have an idea about um, using retainers to have people spend 6,000 for six months with me and they don't even get to pick their treatments. There's another one where I'm bringing in two estheticians at a time because I have I downsized my space. I'm gonna be hiring estheticians to take over so I can focus on the academy a bit more. And um, one will be in the room and one will be supporting with retail because I want more revenue but I don't have rooms for people to do more facials. So I'm gonna have them work together so that the one providing the facial hands off to the one that's supporting them with home care. So you get to see these behind the scenes test to see if you even like the idea and did it work or not. Real time um, mindset, that's my, my love. We all have a billion parts of us, the part of us that wants to do this and the part of us that doesn't. I help you harmonize the parts so that they work together and so much more. So if you're curious to join, um, I just super long winded and I can't believe so many of you are still on even for this part, but this is what it looks like to join again. It's a year's worth of my support. For right now, there is a payment plan where it's nine payments of 195, but a mega discount is if you pay in full. It's 997 for the whole year. It I it will be going up. Um, this is kind of insane, but I, I want more people. It's a founding member. It's still newer. I have 20 students right now. It is the time to get in. They are texting me. That's the kind of support they're getting. So um, they text me and then we upload it into the academy so everybody can benefit from it, but it's super small. So if you're curious, if you want support, I would love to support you. And that's what it would look like. Again, if you need to come back and pause to read this, you can. But um, if you need a little more info for that as well, I totally understand. If you were just here for this, awesome. I'm so glad, I hope it served you. Um, we work really hard and I believe that we change the world in making people feel important, feel special, to feel validated, to feel like we're just holding space for them. We need to be healthy, happy, and supported. So if I can just do that, I'm thrilled. I'm so grateful I have the time to do this sort of stuff. But if you are still curious, but you need more info, I do have a free masterclass, covers some of this, some different stuff too, a lot of like the big mistakes that people make and what to do instead. So you can access that masterclass. You can also email me if you have special questions from this. Just put subject money making so I know you're here so you will get a priority. And if you're like, hell yeah, I wanna join, then there's the URL. Uh, it's tinyurl.com forward slash elite spa. And thank you all so much. This is awesome being here, even though I've just been looking at myself the whole time in the slides. I can feel the energy. So Any questions? We did get a question. It says, I have been in the business for eight years. I started mm -hmm. making six figures about five years ago, but since going brick and mortar versus at home concierge, it's been an uphill battle. What mm -hmm. do you recommend to secure a client? It's hard to get them, but when they come in, they stay with me for years. Their up and down definition affects my finances. So please clarify, do you mean <clears throat> that you went brick and mortar? Were you I working? apologize. No, you're good. Were you home based and then you went brick and mortar or opposite? I'm so sorry. I think I was typing too quickly. So I meant to say it, the up and down definitely has affected my finances. Mm -hmm. Um, So I essentially started uh, eight years ago and out the gate, I had the idea that, you know what, I'm going to just bring my massage table, everything to your home. Mm -hmm. So this is like pre-COVID. So it was very popular. Mm -hmm. And then um, basically um, over the years, I just simultane simultaneously happened to go to school to become an esthetician as well as went to nursing school. So whereas it has exploded recently, mm -hmm. I've actually been doing both for many years. Mm -hmm. So to make a long story short, my niche was the whole concierge concept because I came from a Wall Street background mm -hmm. and I know about the whole kind of like as a financial advisor, making it all about the client. Right. So I was very successful in in that way. So COVID happened. 
it was very lucrative. But then um, we had a baby. Mm -hmm. So I said to myself, you know what, no matter how much money this is making, I cannot keep like I can't keep with this. You know what I mean? I also Mm -hmm. have a nursing job. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, I made the big leap and I opened a brick and mortar. Okay. I my my income and just just the just as a medical esthetician, like Mm -hmm. not anything else, but the money I made as an esthetician dropped by half. Okay. Like when I went when I became a brick and mortar, mm-hmm. and it was kind of scary because it's like it dropped by half in terms of sales, but I, now and I now you overhead. have right overhead. right now you have overhead. So, so did you did you anticipate those clients coming to your brick and mortar? Some of them, yes. To be completely okay. transparent, I yeah. anticipated 40, 30 to forty percent. And the reason I'll tell you full transparency, I sign a lot of NDAs, but seventy mm-hmm. percent of my clients have been celebrities or athletes or whatever. It just okay. worked. It just fell into you know. It fell in for me. Mm-hmm. The thing is that obviously, understandably, it's hard to get them to come to your office. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I especially just, if they're celebrity. Yeah. Exactly. So I actually. I was hoping the quality, I know that sounds so naive, but I just, I was hoping because I have a good reputation and the quality of my work, Mm -hmm. I thought that, okay, like with the 30%, I'll grow. Mm -hmm. Then it became, I opened in an affluent area, but not everyone could commute there. You know what I mean? So then I started Mm -hmm. marketing to Mm -hmm. the area that I'm in. I'm in New Jersey. Okay. And I can honestly tell you, I'm pretty sure the economy plays a role, but it's like, I think my frustration, full transparency is that when someone comes to me, they stay with me. They're amazed. Like they're like, because mm-hmm. I basically do head to toe comprehensive wellness. I don't like, I, I, I started in lashes and now I do full on. I even do semi glutide. Not a, I'm not a fan of it. I try to make people do the, not more of the natural stuff, but I offer mm-hmm. that too. So right. for me, it's like when someone comes with me, they stick with me. But mm-hmm. for me, the, the values and benefits are so amazing it's hard to translate through an ad it's hard to translate through mark you know what i mean or maybe yeah. i'm doing something wrong but it's just kind of like scary to know that i made such a big investment and mm-hmm. then i'm struggling to get clients and i honestly can tell you brick and mortar i don't desire to go back to the concierge model because right, right. It, i took it took a toll on my you know it, it's a different toll like your yeah. vehicle your timing mm-hmm All right. Well, Bree, let me ask you some questions and I want to be sure that I can really like give you some solid stuff. So I might ask you questions and will it be okay if you start to talk and it's like more information that I need for me to stop you? That's fine. Okay. All right. Cool. So do you still have, would it be unusual for you to reach out to some of those celebrities not to solicit business? It wouldn't be weird for you to reach out to them? No. Some of them have even allowed me to use them for content. Okay. All right. So then I would ask them, Hey, I need more business. Like I'm the biggest one about just be honest. And I would say to them, ah, man, I didn't think that my business would drop this much and I'm not exactly sure what to do. Do you have anybody you can send me? Do you know anybody that lives around here? Because they also will have people that they might connect, be connected with and they might be more influential. So that would be one approach. Doesn't mean you'd like it, but that's an idea. Um, I'm wondering if you, if you are niching enough if you are really speaking to a specific thing. And for me, niching doesn't have to be a specific service. For mine, it's a personality type. I want highly sensitives and empaths who know there's more to stuff than stuff, that this experience is me holding them like a baby, right? And I'm like talking about that in my marketing because then I get people in here that are crying with me during a facial just because. and that's my niche is saying like you can get a cheaper facial anywhere and a great facial a lot of places but why do you pick me because it's more than that because not only will your skin look different you will feel different so i'm like that's again but i'm doing uh, lash tinting facials reiki crystal healing hypnotherapy if i tried to talk about all that i wouldn't have anybody coming to me but i'm talking to the person that's my ideal client i'm not even telling them what services i do So like my business is called the self-care center. Nobody has any idea what I do. And, but it's very niched in what is it addressing? So I'm super curious if you can play around with niching a little bit and something too with niching, you don't have to only have that one niche. It's just one niche per ad, right? Or per content. So you would focus on a certain niche for two weeks, focus on a different one for two weeks, like give people a time to soak in the one um, 
do, do I feel like I'm on a good track here for you or no? Um, you really are. I'm like, <laughs> I'm actually taking notes only because okay. it is very insightful. Okay. Because um, I think that was one of the things that's kind of tricky, the niching, because mm -hmm. I don't, I feel like I always have to remind people, or maybe that's what I'm saying. Again, it's like probably a me problem where it's mm -hmm. like, I'm reminding people of everything that I do. Right. Whereas I mean, I'm like, there is a client that will appreciate that. I don't have to remind them that I'm also a therapist, that I'm also a nurse right. and I'm, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I've been struggling with that niching. So I would, I would suggest looking into what is the fear for you? This is, this is work I do all the time. So I, and I actually, uh, I'm going to just tell you a personal story. Maria, are we okay? We're going way over time. Is that all right? No, let's go for it. Okay. All right, cool. Let me know when we have to stop. I'm obsessed but, with this. I'm loving it. <laughs> so I was just I'm working loving with it too. The, Thank you for your time. Yeah, the esthetician that I'm bringing on, she has a very successful pra practice in Colorado. Her parents are here. They were getting wow. a divorce. She's here to help her dad. They're not getting divorced now. And she's like, I think I love it here. I don't know if I want to go back to Colorado. Well, I'm like, well, I don't want to hire you if you're going to break my heart and go back to Colorado, but I want help because it's my season and I want to do this more. So bringing her on yesterday, I start talking about all the different things I do. Now, I know she's not a client, but this is relevant to what I'm saying is I started talking and lately I have been in every conversation getting really mindful and through the conversation asking myself, what's your intention here? What's your intention here? And so in the middle of talking to her, I said, I'm so sorry. I want to pause for a moment because I just realized I'm trying to impress you and I don't need to impress you. And probably because I'm trying to impress you, I'm losing you. And she was totally confused. It didn't, it was, I didn't need to say it out loud, but that's me learning how to be vulnerable and not feel stupid and really calling myself out on stuff. But that's what I find is that we are, we need them to know we do everything because we're scared we're not going to make enough. We're scared they're not going to see our value. For me, it's people will change their mind about me. I'm always afraid, right? I feel like an all-star when I do things and I'm like, oh, as soon as they like me, they're going to see that I'm not perfect and they're going to think I'm a loser and then they're not going to believe in me. And that governs so many things. That's why that getting in that abundant space before we create is so important because it creates a different energy. So that niching part is just, just focus on stuff but you can focus on all the things, but focus on each one in each area, if that makes sense. Like um, even when you're talking about multiple services, bring it back to the same intention. So I will talk about my facials. Yes, you will get amazing results. Yes, you do. Because as thoughtful as I am with your emotions, I am with choosing the right skincare line, right? So it's like, it's always coming back to, I wanna help people emotionally. How am I getting them in the door? because everyone's vain and they want to look younger. But what they don't want to do is they don't want to die alone. They don't want to be unloved. They don't want to be rejected. So like I'm teaching people this while it's in skincare, but also I'm kind of going all over because now we're getting into my passion talk. Um, we do this to ourselves by wanting to be all the things to all the people, but we need to figure out why is why are we so afraid that we won't make it unless everybody knows everything. So hopefully that is, is helpful. It was very helpful, actually. Thank you very much. I You're think welcome. that might be, that, that might be part of it to the niching and yeah. don't apologize yeah. for the passion talk. Cause that's literally how I talk to my clients. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm like, I'll, I get so excited. It's ridiculous. I'm always like, hold on, Heather has to calm down. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's great. And I would ask people for help. Ask people that you think can help you for help. Just do it. You know, like I so often, so I mentioned when I first opened the business, I was running ads. This year, I took the ad money and I'm spending on SEO because I needed people in the door. Now I need people continuing to come in the door. But I want people who want me, not the people who are like, oh, cool, a facial special. So um, what was the point about that? Hold on. There was a point. Um, what was I just talking about? Too excited. I get too excited. I forget now. Oh, oh, right. All right. So then I invested in SEO. And so now I don't have the same flood of clients. I have the people I retained from the special. So now I had cards that are referral cards. And I've said to them, look, last year, you know, you found me from a deal. I'm not running the deal anymore. And I'm a little bit scared. 
can you give these to friends and tell them why it's worth it? Because now they're going to be paying full price, but I'm going to give you a deal still. So like, I'm so transparent. And what's weird is that I sometimes think if someone's fancy in the spa industry is watching me, would they think I was unprofessional? But like my clients respect me and they think I am super professional, even standing there barefoot. And I have my cat with me in my arms most of the time. But it's that like just that super transparency. Just say to those people, I know it makes sense why you're not coming to my place, but I don't know what to do because it's not growing as fast. Do you have any suggestions or can you, you know, help introduce me to people? Utilize the connections that you have. They can be your ambassadors. Any other questions or feedback or comments? I would love to hear. I know Maria opened the chat, so I'll be in there. I'm not great at this part of it. So also feel free to email me if I'm not as good in the chat as I will. I will try. I will try. I, so your passion talk is making me reflect on my passion. I'm um, talking, it's very helpful. I actually agree because I think the fact that we're all here together is likes attract likes. And I think that we're all very passionate people yeah. about this industry. So yeah. I love the fact that you're talking about your passion because it gets me. I, yeah, I love it. And what's so cool, like I had mentioned, so I see that Richard is very active in the group. I had not heard of him before, but the, the part of me that's insecure and new in this group program, I, you know, felt a, like a little bit like, hmm. And so then I was like, okay, let me watch Richard's lives before I come in and do a live, just to see what the vibe is. And what I learned just really quick, I noticed the growth that I had because in the past I would have been like, oh, he talked about this. I have to one up it. No, I decided I loved him and I wanted to compliment each other. And so I thought, okay, I love the emotional stuff. Why don't I just own it? That's my niche. Scarcity wanted me to expand and talk about other things. But when I ground myself and think, what has the universe put me here for? It's emotions. And you guys are here for that too. So um, home-based studio, there's a lot there. So that's a whole different thing. I will definitely respond to you though. There's a lot to, I wanna know what the hesitation comes from. So so either go into the chat after this, not this chat, but the, the extended one, or send me an email and we'll talk about, because there is a lot of hesitation. There's a lot of reason why that would be an apprehensive thing. And then there's a lot of perks to it as well. So but, there's two things I would love to add. One, Heather does have a free training mm -hmm. and I put it in this chat. So actually there's three. So here's- If, for the free if chat. we're still sharing, we're not sharing the screen anymore, right? You don't have to. Okay, I don't even know how to stop it. Oh, here we go. There you go. So I put the free training in the chat, that, mm -hmm. which I loved. And then two, if you're ready to do kind of a one on one, here's the booking. Mm -hmm. Three, because I really want to focus on the do not suffer in silence. Uh, Heather was kind enough to do a chat. Mm -hmm. So let me get the link. I really would like to continue the conversation. So for example, what my hope for the chat is, you're like, I have this client coming in, I don't know what to do. And it's kind of like you have a support reel in time. Mm -hmm. And Heather is there to help us through it. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that's a great way to know her. Mm -hmm. So I really want I'm trying to find the best way to get everybody support. So there's three ways, uh, get the free training, book the one on one call with Heather, join the chat. And we continue the conversation in the group and this yeah. will have a replay on youtube awesome thank you everybody so much i really appreciate it and uh maria i love you i love oh, the opportunity you. you give all of us and the community that you're creating i mean I, it's just it's pretty spectacular thank i know you. i i so like you know fangirl you every time we talk but i just oh. think you're awesome so i fangirl you but i want to yeah. know do you guys have any questions before I log off? Because I would hate to log off and they're just like, I didn't get that answered. And if anybody is willing, right, help my little insecure part, tell me something that you loved about it. Like what stood out the most, even if it's just a word. Oh my God. Um, Everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Honestly, oh, what got me is I think that, and I'm probably talking to everybody, but like, I like the fact that you said ad. You don't have to niche your business, but you can niche your ad. Mm -hmm. And once they come in, so for example, I'm niching on acne right now, but mm -hmm. once they come in, you just kind of open the door to everything else you have. So I love the fact that you mm -hmm. talked about like 
because you don't necessarily have to niche yourself, but you can niche the ad yeah. for two weeks and see what happens. I mean, if you have a guy coming to fix your refrigerator and then you have a mechanic who also is a handyman, which one do you want fixed in your refrigerator? The one that, that is the Samsung refrigerator repair guy or the handyman who does everything? And if right. they're the same price, right? So build rapport and you build rapport with trust. People trust an expert, become an expert. You can, you, we can be experts at all the things, but people don't believe it. So let them know you're an expert in the thing they need just one at a time. Yeah. Yeah. And then also how authentic you are. It's totally you. Thanks. And that kind of like just shows everybody if you're really yourself, you're going to be very successful. Yes. A hundred percent. It's so much easier too. It's way more fun and less exhausting to just be yourself than pretending for those people that need me to pretend. I don't even want them as clients. There was a period I wanted their money, but I'll make it some other way. (laughs) I'll just make it some (laughs) other way. It'll be way more fun, you know? So, well, really, honestly, this is a pleasure. I'm so, I'm so grateful. I'm so happy to be able to be here and to be a resource for everybody. Um, You know, what kind of a dream come true it is for me to have this as a, a side business for me and potentially grow it into a big business as well. It's amazing. So thank you all. And I will keep an eye on the chat and I will see you guys next time. Thank you, everybody. We'll skip back in the chat. (laughs) All right. See you.